Good morning to you all this fine day. I have an entire 60 seconds to have my say from Edinburgh. I have been sent to write my vision for the historic environment. <laughs> Aim one, delivering archaeology through collaborating locally and internationally. Aim two, enhancing our no our Aim two, enhancing understanding our knowledge accessible, broad and commanding. Aim three, caring and protecting, managing erosion, change and metal detecting. Aim four, encouraging great engagement, education, excitement and entertainment. Uh, aim five is skills and innovation, easy for a cutting edge scientific nation. So remember these aims when applying for money, rejection letters are only funny. Come and see our stall outside where we'll be happy to provide some tips on how to get involved and our banter will leave you enthralled. <coughs> and if the strategy gives you the heebie-jeebies, then at least come and get some freebies. Ten seconds interpretive dance time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Isabel MacDonald. I work at Scotland Street School Museum. It's part of Glasgow Museums. So our current exhibition is Glaswegian Asians, which we, we've been working on with a community group called Colourful Heritage. Now they're based in Glasgow. They've been researching the South Asian and Muslim history in Glasgow and been working with them to do this exhibition. Now they've got loads of oral histories, they've been developing archives at the Mitchell Library and they put that together with our exhibition uh, and our collections to look at the history of the South Asian community in the last 150 years uh, in Glasgow. Now, which surprised me, 150 years, wow. Um, as well as that longer time scale, we've looked at individual themes such as war, education, uh, home life, entrepreneurship. So, um, yeah, it's, there's loads of different things and we're doing lots of events around it. And just come and see us, that's it. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. So could we could we have Roland, please? Roland? You ready? Oh, come around to the microphone. Okay. Um, Go. So I'm Roland Spencer-Jones, um, part of NOSAS, North of Scotland Archaeology Society, um, down from Inverness, down from the Highlands. Our society is 20 years old next year. Amazing, but true. And as part of the, what we're doing to celebrate, uh, we've got a number of activities, including um, a conference weekend. Um, the last weekend of March, get your diaries out now, book yourselves in to come up to Inverness the last weekend of March. The weather is always good at that time of year. <laughs> We've got a number of things happening, but particularly we're going to spend the morning of that Saturday conference reviewing the past. Uh, what we've been doing over the last 20 years, we and lots of other community archaeology groups. And the afternoon is really interesting. We're going to peer into the future for community archaeology. What's going to be happening over the next 20 years? What will archaeology, science, different surveying techniques, how will we be working differently in 20 years? <laughs> Hello, I'm Christine McPherson. I'm the chair of the Edinburgh Archaeological Field Society. And as it's the year of history, heritage and archaeology, we decided we needed a project. We have decided our project is based on the Camo estate. And as they only allowed me one slide, you're getting a picture of the beautiful Camo house. I did have a lovely picture of what it looked like in the 70s after 30 dogs had been living it for 10 years. Um, but they wouldn't let me show you. Um, we have a group with the Friends of Camo, the City of Edinburgh Ar um, Council, with young archaeologists, with Edinburgh University, and this area has got a history from the 12th century that we know of, and nobody's ever dug there before, and it's great. So anybody who wants to come along, look at our website. Excellent. So you're up, Yolanda. Ready? Okay. 
Good morning, I'm Yolanda McCall and this is the wonderful Tower of St John the Baptist in Ayr. It is the surviving bell tower of Ayr's original parish church. I'm one of the friends of St John's Tower and Scotland's urban past have been working with our group since 2015. The SUP team have inspired me and now I'd like to engage young people in community heritage to make local history the high story or even the high five story. See what I did there? <laughs> so I've written a book which a local school has just bought 45 copies of. Yay! <laughs> the Tale of the Scottish Tower. It's a fictional story informed by historical facts with real characters from 17th century air when Cromwell's soldiers commandeered the old church and tower while building Air Citadel. If anyone would like to chat about writing a community heritage book, please catch me in a break. Or if you'd like a copy, they're just five pounds a day, or two for ten pounds. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we have people who don't have slides, um, and as punishment, I've put up an even bigger clock. <laughs> so, <laughs> Alex, if you'd like to come join us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Alex Hale. Uh, I'm an archaeologist with Historic Environment Scotland. You probably all know me as that, with that hat on. And I'm also uh, managing the graffiti recording project for Historic Environment Scotland. So come and talk to me about that later. However, I'm here with another hat on. As you may know, since 2013, I've been standing in the corner doodling at community heritage conferences trying to capture the past through images, telling the stories, your stories, the way you tell them through illustrations. Somebody set me a challenge this time round. We have four parallel sessions. So I was trying to see how I could cut myself into smaller parts. It doesn't work. Luckily, we've got four volunteers. We'll be around all day today, all day tomorrow. Lewis, Joe, Mark, Neil and myself Come and join us. We've got a public doodle desk as well. So come and draw your pictures as well. Thank you. Excellent. So who's up next? You want to go up next? Great. Hi, I'm Susan Hamilton, and it's fitting that I don't have a slide because data I work in data management, which might just be the most boring part. We look after all the nuts and bolts of Canmore, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. We've got a new farm. It's a close relative of the Scotland's urban past farm and the Scotland's rural past farm, and we've called it the Scotland's past farm. It took a lot of workshopping. Um, we'd, we want you to use it to share your work with Canmore and the National Collection. Photos, drawings, text and reports. Your group can use it as much or as little as you like. One lesson we hope we've learned from community groups is that work goes in flurries and you have a very active few weeks and then a very quiet few months. Use it however you want, completely flexible. If you're not part of a group, you can still use it to share your research. Come and have a chat. I'm outside with postcards. And if you want to do something but you're unsure, come and have a chat and we can hopefully give you some inspiration and you can volunteer from the comfort of your own computer. Okay, I think it's Ross, yeah? Good morning, I'm Ross Wallace. I'm the uh, convener of Langside Community Heritage, which as of yesterday uh, became a registered charity in Scotland. Langside Community Heritage is partnering with a number of organisations in Glasgow and uh, across Scotland to present a commemorative event series in May of next year to mark the 450th anniversary of the Battle of Langside. We are running uh, workshops for school children leading up to the event. We'll be holding uh, a series of events over the weekend of the 12th and 13th of May, which includes music and drama performances by local groups. It includes workshops and craft demonstrations and hands-on opportunities for young people and people of all ages, which will include things like Lego, pottery making, um, and nettle string making, <laughs> candle making, and all sorts of good stuff. Thank you. Excellent. 